Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz saxophonist and composer Jimmy Green on the 2020 CD, While Looking Up, and this new COVID-19 jazz world we live in. We caught up with him at his home in early April 2020 to talk at length about this new material and the world as it moves forward, this strange, surreal one, and all the hope that he has. Dig it. Jimmy, thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So we are in the midst of probably an unprecedented time in human history, and I couldn't imagine a better time to talk about a hopeful album like While Looking Up. So talk to me a little bit about how this album feels, probably even before this happened and maybe a little bit even more now that we're in the middle of you know this quarantine and this pandemic that's going on in the world. The, the title, While Looking Up, uh, is a reference to something that my pastor said uh, in a sermon uh, quite a time ago, maybe a year or so ago. And uh, he said, if I can't find peace and strength looking inward uh, to myself, if I can't find it looking to my immediate surroundings, I need to start looking upward, you know. And to me, that really resonated. As many uh, folks know, my uh, family... We had a humongous uh, personal tragedy. Uh, my daughter was one of the first graders killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012. And I honestly believe, aside from the support of so many uh, thousands, tens of thousands of people um, in our immediate surroundings and around the country and around the world, uh, it's our faith that's really been sustaining us. and. So that sermon resonated with me in a very special way. And I really felt like uh, that kind of uh, hopefulness is something that we need today, even before, like you said, even before a coronavirus uh, made its uh, entrance into our world uh, several months ago. Um, my specific reference was the just the very divisive rhetoric um, that is played out on a daily basis here in our country, and, you know, you listen to the news or you, you look at your Twitter feed, and, and uh, politically our country is in a, you know, as polar, uh, uh, divided place as, as I can ever remember, and my, my, my concept was not to provide music to escape and to kind of drown yourself in to forget about what's going on. No, it's, you know, while looking up, you know, and it's something that resonates with me, is looking for strength. For me, looking for spiritual strength so that when it's time to return to the daily tasks that we all have, we have more perspective, we have more love in our hearts, we have more uh, guidance, and, and we're able to do what we need to do uh, to change our little small corner of the world as much as we need to. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. I've had some pretty lucid thoughts about the aftermath when this is all over with. And I guess my question to you is, you know, when this is all said and done and we get back to live music and we get back to reality, what do you hope that both the musician and the audience member gets from this experience as they head back into live jazz? Yeah, well, I, I don't think we'll ever come back the same, you know. Um, this has changed us. I, I can speak for me personally. It's changed me. You know, even though tragedy is something, I, unfortunately, I'm not unfamiliar with, you know, this, dealing with this, losing uh, people in our community, uh, musician community, losing people in my uh, immediate uh, community where I live, you know, this is this is very, very traumatic experience that we're all going through. Uh, so I don't think we're going to come back the same. So uh, my hope is that uh, one way that we all change is that we can find that, you know, this virus doesn't really discriminate. So I hope we can find more love and acceptance in our hearts for one another because we, at the end of the day, we're much more alike than we are different. No matter our political views, no matter our race, our color, our ethnicity, our gender, uh, we're all more alike than we are different. And 
you know, I think emerging from this uh, quarantine state, we all have to keep that in mind. You know, we're not, uh, none of us is around forever. This is a very fleeting time. We're all here together on this planet, you know. Um, uh, It makes me appreciate all the little things that we take for granted every day, you know, like picking up my instrument to to play it or to practice. That's a gift. That's a luxury, you know. Uh, The fact that I get to uh, make music on a daily basis, that's a luxury. That's a, wow, that's an amazing thing. You know, it's very difficult to take little things for granted when, you know, the specter of this virus hangs over all of us every day. So I hope, you know, people come back refreshed, uh, reinvigorated, but just more committed to loving one another. It's kind of that post-9-11 kind of thing that you hope that, that we can all hold on to. You know, your album came out on April 3rd. Um, and I've been talking to a lot of musicians where their albums have come out during this time. What's, what's the, is it bittersweet? What are your, what are your thoughts about this album coming out during this extraordinary time in, in, in our history? Well, it's unfortunate, uh, just because we had some live shows planned that, uh, are going to be postponed until some later date. Um, for me, it's actually significant to the release date. And this wasn't planned intentionally, but, uh, it had to do with, you know, the best kind of time frame for the, uh, uh, for Mac Avenue's release schedule. The release date, April 3rd, is the day before my daughter Anna's uh, birthday, April 4th. So, for me, it, it was actually uh, quite fitting that this album was released when it was. So, although, you know, we won't, we won't get to play the live shows um, that we had planned, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very hopeful that in the comfort of their homes, people can can watch and, and listen to the music. You know, the one thing that I've also noticed about this, talking to musicians and just thinking about it is, is that, you know, it's, it's going to be really hard to get physical media to people. And I'm wondering if this might, the silver lining of this may open up the reality that it's going to be much better for, especially the jazz musician, to be able to push digital media and to maybe get some of these albums out to more people. You know, I don't know how the the whole thing will shake out as an industry. Um, every every industry in America is, is kind of taking a hit right now. Uh, but I do hope that you know, um, as musicians, you know, there's there's a lot of musicians, me included, who are doing a lot more online content these days. Uh, whether it's uploading little videos of us playing or, or, you know, concerts from our home. I'm participating in a concert, uh, as a matter of fact, this weekend on Easter Sunday in the afternoon uh, for Jazz at Lincoln Center. I'm doing a, a short set, just solo saxophone from my home. So a lot of us are, are doing what we can uh, to stay creative, to stay engaged, to stay focused with our audiences. Um, as far as... Uh, Getting digital media out there, uh, like I said, I don't know how this will all shake out in the industry, but uh, it's encouraging to see so many of my fellow musicians uh, taking to their social media platforms and other platforms to to keep uh, keep this music alive. You know, this album for you was a healing. Um, a, 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 it, it was a part of healing, and now that we're in the COVID nineteen world, you know, I think we're going to probably need healing more and more. Has this album taken on an extra layer? And, and and what do you feel, how do you feel about releasing material that does have a level of cathartic uh, good for people? Well, you know, I, I don't know if I can speak for every artist, but I can speak for many in saying that every every work of music, every album, every work of artists is sort of cathartic for the artist. I mean, it's uh, it's our chance to express ourselves in the media that we've kind of dedicated our lives to, to cultivating, you know, uh, to be able to speak in the musical language is, is something that we all strive for. So um, it is cathartic to write music and to and to hear it realized and to be able to share it with people. Um, and I'm certainly blessed to 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 be able to do that. And the fact that the album uh, thus far has been really, really warmly received uh, that 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 means a lot to me. Absolutely. Well, it's a wonderful recording, Jimmy. Thank you for taking some time out in this very surreal and strange time in the world to talk about not only your album, but uh, what's going on and hopefully the, the hope that we all have when we get back to our lives. 
All right, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Connecticut, New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Jimmy again for his time, his stories, and his music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.